Across Australia, prior to main school and public holidays, thousands of people of all ages and walks of life are anticipating a long road trip. Some just can't wait to get going to visit relatives and friends. Others are excitedly packing their surfboards, fishing or golf gear, ready for a holiday. Sadly, some of these people won't reach their destination, whilst others won't make it back, simply because they were driving when they were tired. That's why the New South Wales State Emergency Service members, along with fellow volunteers from other service clubs and community groups, give up their own time to operate driver reviver sites. You know, we're, we're here to save lives and it's worth my time. I don't mind doing it. To stop for five minutes along your, along your journey and to stretch your legs, like to, to save not only your lives and the, your children's lives, but other people's lives. I've seen quite a few bad incidents in my time with SES out here, but not so much in the last 10 years since we've been doing drive revivers, so it must make a bit of a difference, I think. Here at Penrose Forest, a couple of hours out of Sydney on the Hume Highway, the Windsor Carribee SES unit is often the first rest stop for travellers from Sydney or the Central Coast. Yeah. No, the best side of uh, driver reviver is that uh, you get a chance to step out of the car, you, you see new faces, you talk to new people. It's, it's excellent, I think you feel fresh. Um, I, I really enjoy it. And the coffee does help you. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, this is great. Driving while tired is a major killer on all roads, but particularly on country roads. Young drivers are not immune to fatigue and SES volunteers are delighted when they stop for a break. This group was so impressed with the hospitality displayed by the SES volunteers, they burst into song. Stop, revive, survive, and then you stay alive. Stop, revive, survive, and then you stay alive. Over. <laughs> Stop, revive, survive. Oh yeah. Further along the highway at Yass, the SES unit coordinates a number of other community groups, including firefighters, Lions Club members and church groups. Together they form an awesome fatigue fighting force. Operating on both sides of the highway, the SES team at Yass is active serving motorists 24 hours a day. This well presented site is one of the busiest in all of Australia. Yeah, well when we stop we uh, stretch our legs, let the cat out of the car and have a bit of a run around, go to the loo, grab a cup of tea and uh, a packet of Bickies and sit down and relax for 10-15 minutes. Fresh air, great. And the fresh air, yeah, yeah that's the fresh best. air. Wow. Cool mountain air and a hot cup of tea and a packet of chocolate biscuits. I've got another couple of hours driving to do them again. To give the kids something to do so the parents can have a good break, the Yas site has a totem tennis game interesting displays and reading material. They cook up a mouth-watering sausage sandwich too. Yeah, actually it's a, it's a great idea. Uh, I'm all for it, you know, the guys are doing a great job. Gives the driver a chance to stop, revive, survive obviously. Um, grab something to eat, you know, rest the eyes, rest the body, you know, for half hour, odd, odd hour, and just get on moving again. It's important to get to the um, end of our journey safely. I mean, it'd be awful should something happen over Christmas or Easter and these times are just great. And this just breaks the journey, get out, stretch your legs, everyone's waiting for you when you get there, it's good. Arrive revived. The kids actually look out for the driver reviver signs. There's a blue one, there's a blue one. <laughs> Can we get out? And they're very kind, lovely people. Yeah, they're always really friendly, always good to chat to. Often motorists heading to Melbourne or Adelaide from Queensland, Sydney or Canberra will be driving at night. This is not recommended by road safety experts, who say people should keep to their normal sleeping patterns and be well rested before they leave on their trip. Mm -hmm. 
Drivers who spend most of their time on city or suburban roads often don't realise how out on the open road a split second loss of concentration can put them and their family under a truck or into a tree. While much of the country is still tucked up in their beds, SES volunteers are out there, busy changing shifts or heading to depots to pick up their driver reviver gear. At the SES Holbrook unit, they have an excellent facility from which to operate. Setting up, however, still takes planning and teamwork before the kettle is boiled for the first cupper of the day. Even putting up the signs requires the legendary SES teamwork and discipline particularly when the fingers are still cold on a winter's morning. We've only ever had one call out while we've had a, a driver reviver on, and that was a bus ran off the road uh, just, just north of town. If one person stops for a cup of coffee, then uh, it's, you know, we've, we've done the job, basically, and uh, driver reviver definitely contributes to, uh, to our lack of call outs and less accidents, yeah. But the message is getting through to, that if we're not open, pull into a coffee shop, pull into a shop, have a drink. But the amount of accidents, the, the way it's dropped here in the last two years that we've been active members, we can actually see the difference. It's very much yes, yes, is committed to a driver reviver. So yeah, we're in here for the long haul and uh, educate drivers. A lot easier to serve a cup of tea than what it is to cut someone out. And yeah, and we are actually glad that they do stop. Yeah, about 14 in, in the Holbrook SES, yeah. Yeah, they're a good bunch, funny bunch. Yeah, no, well, we have a lot of fun, yeah, it's not just all serious uh, accidents and stuff like that, we do have fun, yeah. We have um, meetings on the first Tuesday of every month and trainings on the third Tuesday of every month. 99% of the accidents that we get called out are caused by fatigue, they are, definitely. Uh, the last one we went to uh, up near uh, the Lady Smith Turner, um, was only what two weeks ago, and uh, there's two Utes head on in mid afternoon. And uh, the driver of the, the vehicle that caused the accident had been driving for something like seven hours without a break. I mean, imagine being fatigued, as we said before, with Rod and hitting somebody and killing a family full of uh, a young family, an old family, just because you couldn't be bothered stopping for five minutes and having a cup of tea. Like, that's pretty slack if you can't take five minutes out of your journey. No one needs to make a legend of themselves because the real legends live till they get older. You don't need to die in a car accident from fatigue when you're a young kid. Probably 70% of the, the people we, uh, we scrape off the road, I mean, it probably doesn't sound very nice, uh, are younger people. Uh, probably uh, from late teens to mid-twenties, mid maybe, uh, maybe late twenties. Just the smell at an accident scene of burning rubber and often you've got a loud stereo going, the smell of blood, the smell of urine or whatever, it's all at once and it's, it's horrific and to rock up to a scene or to be involved in an accident and, and to think that you caused it, because you didn't stop for a five minute coffee break, it's, it's ridiculous. Well we've stopped probably every two hours, we left home at seven this morning, we've had, this is our fourth stop now? Fifth stop, yeah. We've we've really been conscious of needing to stop. In June 1998, uh, there was a terrible storm at home up in Newcastle, and um, I had a four and a half ton tree fall on the house. So an SES service came all the way from Parramatta just to help us out, and it was just wonderful. They were absolutely fantastic, uh, great group of people, and. Um, I'll never forget it, and I've never been able to thank them, so maybe I can now. Yeah, we've stopped at um, quite a few driver reviver um, stops along the way, and um, it's great that the SES are involved in it. Um, it's also much better for the SES to serve tea and coffee and bickies to travellers, rather than help clear debris off the road after a bad accident when people haven't stopped enough. The New South Wales State Emergency Service is proud of the contributions its members have made in reducing the road toll through driver reviver and making sure motorists live to enjoy more trips on Australian roads. Yeah, we try to stop at least every two hours and at least get out and stretch our legs, but um, it's 
wonderful to be able to stop somewhere and, and have something like this done for us. We aim to hope, help the most people that we can. <laughs> In contrast to the units at Yass and Holbrook, operating Driver Reviver on the Hay Plains presents a different set of challenges. It, yeah, it gets really cold out here sometimes. This provides us for shelter from the wind. But uh, yeah, you just have to put up with the cold. In the summertime, it's the opposite. Summertime, it's very it's hot like and a lot of flies. Well, we really think it's great that you guys have stopped because although they don't know it, it's the people sort of under 25 particularly the males that tend to get fatigued and kill themselves on the road. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people who call in are surprised that we do it on a voluntary basis and um, in our own free time and yeah, expect that we are being paid, but we're not, we do it, yeah, in our own time. But on the whole, people are very appreciative of it. And a lot of people comment that they're really glad to see us and. They sort of can't believe it when they first see us out here, so they it's wonder reason. why people would be set up in the middle of nowhere with a tent, serving tea and coffee to total strangers. But like we say, it's easier than actually going to an accident, so, and it seems to work. The SES does do a lot of training with um, rescue situations and storm and damage and stuff like that, but it's also good to get in and do a bit of stuff for the community, and members don't mind doing that. It's good to actually do something that's not so full on with training and get out and meet the public. Prevent the accidents. Usually we set up about 7 o'clock in the morning so it could be zero degrees. During the summer it gets up to about 45. So inside the tent it gets it's, very hot. Yeah, it's yeah. hotter in here than 45 degrees. We bring out a large esky come fridge with yeah, yeah, supplies ice. Of ice, water, cordial. Uh, in the past we've been known to bring a generator and an air conditioner with us. <laughs> yeah, you, just, you do what you have to do to survive for people a decent level of comfort. It's most of the accidents, a lot of them are on the highway where we are now and most of them are related to fatigue. We've had a lot of truck accidents where the drivers just don't stop for a rest and uh, yeah, it just gets to them after a while and they lose control of the vehicle and yeah, days off. Most of the accidents are fatigue related. Um, yeah, they, they nod off and okay. out here you can drive off the road and go across the paddock. But the thing is they wake up and try and bring the car back onto the road. So, uh, it always ends up in disaster. They're travelling fairly fast all the time, 110 speed limit. Yeah, speeds that are being travelled out here, sort of, um, if you have an accident, it's always at a fairly high speed, it's a high speed limit. Uh, it's very disastrous when they do go off the road and do the wrong thing. You know, sitting sitting here during the day, we see a lot of traffic go straight past, and um, knowing the people that pull in, a lot of them are, we know have travelled a long distances, starting from Adelaide or Sydney, because um, we're sort of in the middle middle of those two um, cities. And um, yeah, it's just it worries us that we will have to pull them out out of their cars on the way down the road. And the drivers that keep going and drive past sort of makes you wonder what condition they're in, how far they've travelled. Um, are they really fit to keep going? They really need to stop and have a rest. Um, you wouldn't like to come across them if you were coming the other way. So. Uh, we'll meet at our SES headquarters, say about 7 o'clock, and then we'll head out here, which is 30 kilometres out of town. And uh, yeah, it takes Proceed about an hour. Summer. We put the tent up ourselves. Uh, everything's done by us. We don't have any help with anything, just as a group. Uh, yeah, some of the signage is already out here, which has been put in by the RTA for our use. And everything we bring out, we have to pack up and take back into town again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, drive revive is just part of what we do, but everything we do is a lot of fun, and, and if it's not of a serious nature, such as an accident or an actual event that we're attending, but uh, yeah, it's. it's uh, got a good social aspect about it. We all get along very well. Being in the SES is, is really great fun. The training is a lot of fun. 
um, particularly when we go on camps with the younger kids and that sort of thing. We do a lot of first aid training, um, but it's also a very serious thing where we can make a real difference in the community, particularly with driver revivers. With the driver revivers, the best thing is being able to talk to the people. And it's a lot better than uh, going out on the road and having to pull them out of a car accident. It's a lot easier. If we're going to be doing a drive revival, then we want people to stop and have a talk with us. So we'd rather be out here where they feel inclined to pull over at the drive revival oasis. <laughs> 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 well, it sort of is, isn't it?